This method is the partial product method, which is the most common method uh, which normally the students undertake. And yes, we have put up so many methods on the channel which will help you in developing 10 times faster speed of multiplying numbers. But this is the most basic method and everybody should focus on this. Talking about short tricks, let me tell you about the exclusive nominal costing super combo which we have bought out especially for our students who are preparing for quant exams. This is the super combo of quant and reasoning. And look at the features there. If you see this ebook of short tricks and the reasoning course, they contain like 24 different topics here and 18 topics here. They come with video support directory so that if you don't understand something from the ebook, you can watch the video. All the concepts, illustrations, practice questions and previous year questions mention, mentioned in this reasoning course. And uh, obviously, if you study from this, you will develop 10 times faster speed of cracking those multiple choice questions. So this is the best time to grab a copy. You can send me a message on WhatsApp 9896369963. If you are uh, the parent of a child studying in class 4, 5, then this is going to, you know, help you a great deal in developing those competencies which are required for success in the school Olympiads as well. So go for it. The description also contains all details. Let's see the first question for the video. So here we have 7 times 648. Now the students, you know, they write the numbers one below the other and then they do the vertical addition to get the answer. Now if they are good in tables, then the partial product method works wonders. Like here, 7 times table is what is required. So if you multiply 7 times, see I am writing all the steps for the first question but for the subsequent questions I will not write all the steps. 7 times the unit digit here is 8, so this is 56, right? And now 7 times the tens digit, tens digit is 4 here, so 7 times 4 is 28, so I will write 28 but since 4 is in the tens place, I will put a 0 or suffix a 0 with this product. Likewise, if I have to multiply 7 by the hundreds place here, that is 6, 7 6 are 42, but 6 is in the hundred place. So I will write 42, but suffix two zeros with this. Now this is what we need to understand when we are using the partial uh, product method. These three numbers can be written uh, without actually having to write these three products and you can write them directly in the rough column and then Simple addition, vertical addition, 13, 3, 1 carry, so this is 5 and this is 4, will get you the answer for the question. And I'm sure, you know, uh, when you see the first question, it will be like, oh, this is very basic. But yes, the students have to practice and if you practice 20, 30 such questions using this method, I think the method works wonders. Likewise, if you see here, we have to multiply 429 by 12. So what do you do in this case? Again, see. I wrote all the products here, but I will not be writing all these things now. I'll write the numbers directly. So I'll start with the first digit because that will be the largest number which will be obtained. 12, 4 times is 48 and 4 is followed by 2 digits. So 2 zeros to be written here. Likewise, 12, 2 times is 24 and 1 zero because 2 is followed by only 1 digit. So 24 and a zero. 24 and a 0 and then 12 multiplied by 9 which is 108 and since this is the unit digit you don't need to multiply it by anything 108 is to be written directly here and then 8 4 uh, 11 means 1 and a 5 5 1 4 8 gives you that exact product which is required I tell you friends this you can do this in hardly 7 to 8 seconds time and if you can do that in that much time, you know, uh, you are one among those 1% people who use this act, uh, method actually in the exams. So, let's see some more examples which are little bit on the lengthier side. Uh, the huge numbers are involved in this. So, 16 here, right? So, I need to know the 16 times table. Let's do 16, 6 are 96, right? So, I'll write 96, but... 6 is followed by 3 digits here, so I'll write 3 zeros. 
Likewise, 16 multiplied by 2 is 32 followed by two zeros. So, two zeros and a 32. See how I am writing the numbers one below the other so that it becomes easy for me to add them vertically. Likewise, 16 times 2 again is 32 but 1 0. So, 1 0 and a 32. And finally, 16 times 4 is 64 which I have to write without any zeros because that is the unit digit. And now I have my four, four numbers. So, this is 4, this is 8 and then this is 5 and then this is 9 and this is 9. So, 99584 is the answer for this particular question. You can pick up the calculators and check. I am sure the answers are not going to be wrong. This is the beauty of this method. The calculations look big but they are not and the chances of committing the errors are nearly 0%. Now, 14 times table. So, we need to know 14 times table now. 14 times 4 is 56 and how many zeros? 1, 2, 3, 4 digits after 4. So, 4 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4. Likewise, 14 times 1 is 14 and 3 zeros. So, I will put 3 zeros like this and then write 14 times 1, 14 below 60 here. And then 14 times 7 is 98 followed by 2 zeros. So, 2 zeros. And then I write 98. Then 14 times 3 is 42 and a 0. So 0 and a 42 like this. And then 14 times 3 is 42 which I have to write in the last two digits. Below the last two digits. So I got all my numbers. And now very easy. 2. This is 6. This is 12. 12 means 2 and a 1 carry. Uh, 14. 14 means 4 and a 1 carry. So 8 and then 5. 5, 8, 4, 2, 6, 2 is the product. Much more easier method as compared to the traditional multiplication which the students do. But obviously, you know, the number which I have taken here, you should know the 16 times table and 14 times table here. So, here we have a number 648 and I need to divide this by 7. So, let's think that we don't know what is uh, 7 times table like 7 times 1, 7 times 2, 7 times 3, 7 times 7, 7 times 8. It's difficult for the for a child and he commits errors in uh, using those multiples. So, he surely will know what is 7 times 5, right? Because that is half of 70, 35, right? So, what I will do here is I will do 7 times 5 which is 35 and instead of 5, I will write 50 so that this becomes 350 and I will subtract 350 from this. So, this will become 8 and then 14 minus 5 is 9 and then 5 minus 3 is 2. So, I have a smaller number but remember this is a partial quotient. This is not the complete quotient because we have a big number 298 here. Now, suppose you know 7 2 times is 14. So, you can do 20 times. 7 20 times will be 140 and therefore if you subtract them you will get 8, 5 and 1 and then you can do 20 times again because 7 20 times is 140 again. So, you will get a smaller number which is 18 and now 7 2 times is 14 which gets me 4 as the remainder because now 4 is smaller than 7. So, what is the quotient? Add all these partial quotients you get 92. So, the quotient for the question is 92 and the remainder is this number 4. The process looks uh, difficult but the steps are very easy because all these partial quotients which I am writing here, they are simple numbers, the base numbers which can be easily uh, translated in the form of these numbers and then you can subtract and get to the next step. Let us see another example, you will understand it in a better manner. Here we have 4, 2, 9, 1 and we need to divide this by 12. So, again 12 times table is tricky, right? But I know 12 2 times is 24. So, I will do 200 times so that this becomes 2400 and now subtract you get 1, 9 and then 12 minus 4 is 8 and uh, 3 minus 2 is 1. So, 1, 8, 9, 1. Now, 12, 1 times is 12 followed by 2 zeros. So, 2 zeros here. So, I am doing 1200 times which is 1200. That is pretty obvious, right? So, 
what do you get now 196 691 and now if you know 12 5 times is 60 so i'll do 5 times 60 but i'll put a zero so i'll put a zero here also 1250 times is 600 so i get a 91 here and then 12 5 times is 60 which gives me a 31 and then 12 2 times is 24 which gets me a remainder of 7. So the remainder is 7 and add all these partial quotients you will get the final quotient 200, 300, 350, 357. 357 happens to be the quotient and 7 is the remainder. See now the process will look more easier. We are dividing by numbers by 7 and 12 here on this slide. Let's take some more complicated examples to, uh, you know, be sure that the method works for big numbers also. And it is more useful for big numbers rather because 7 times table, 12 times table you might remember, but 23 times table is always tricky. Let's do for 14 times. So here we have 6, 2, 2, 4, which is to be divided by 14. So if I don't know uh, 14 times uh, table, so I can do 100 times, that will be 1400. So I can write this number as per my convenience. 14 times 100 is 1400, that's pretty uh, easy and obvious. So 2 and so 12 minus 4 is 8 and 5 minus 1 is 4. Now you can keep on doing 100 at a time. So this will give you another 1400. So 4, 2. 8 minus 4 is 4 and this is 3. Keep on doing 100. So 1400 and then you have a 4, 2, 0 and 2. Another 100. You have a 1400 and then you have 4, 2, 20 minus 14 is 6. See, very easy and very, very, uh, you know, what do you uh, call it? Uh, a quick method of finding the division, but it's still not complete. So you can do 10 times, 14, 10 times is... 140 if you know uh, 14 to 2 times is 28 you can do 20 times which is 280 as per your convenience that's what i said so this is 4 and then 12 minus 8 is 4 and 5 minus 2 is 3 and likewise you can carry on now 20 another 280 uh, subtracted will give you 4 and 34 minus 28 is 6 64 and now the last step 14 4 times is 56 so 64 minus 56 will give you the remainder as 8 and if the remainder is 8 you can add all these partial quotients to get the final quotient which is 100 200 300 400 444 so 444 happens to be a quotient and the remainder is 8 all these quotients can be written as per your convenience so I can leave this question as a DIY question, do it yourself question, but I'll help you out in, uh, you know, getting to the answer by giving you one or two steps. So if you have to do 23, see this is, if you know double of 23 is 46, so you can do two times 46, right? But do 200 times. So put two zeros here and then you will get three, seven, and this is three, 373. So after this, I want you to work on this, find the partial quotients and add all the partial quotients to get the final quotient. Okay. So do comment uh, what uh, quotient did you get by following this method and did you find this method more easy for big numbers? In my subsequent videos, I'll be taking numbers as big as three digit numbers also. If you divide by three digit numbers uh, using this partial quotient method, this will be more useful. So friends, if you like this video of uh, division of big numbers through partial quotient method, do share it with your friends. Do subscribe the channel and click the bell shift icon for getting all the notifications. Thanks for watching this and all the best.